And that is the secret to those BMAX skies on Instagram. Your skies will pop a little bit more than they did before and help you achieve a certain look that you're going for. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. BMAC. So one of the elements that I pay the most attention to in the photographs that I upload to my Instagram feed are the skies. I'm a sky kind of guy. I'm a hashtag sky guy. I always like to make sure that the skies in my photos look on point. And a lot of you guys have asked how I make the skies in my Instagram photographs look the way that they do. So today I'm finally going to share with you my SSSS. My simple, sexy sky secrets. SS. I'm gonna share with you my sky editing techniques. I have a simple editing technique that I use when editing the skies in my photographs that I think are gonna find helpful. And I think it's a technique that's gonna instantly up the quality of the skies in your photograph and your overall photograph quality as a result that'll help you better achieve a certain look that you're going for in the skies of your photos. While we're at it, if you have your phone nearby, I highly suggest you open it up and go to my Instagram feed, at bmacadelic on Instagram, or you could just go to instagram.com slash bmacadelic. That way you could follow along and see all the Instagram photos where I use this special technique for editing the skies and see it being put to good use. I'm using Adobe Lightroom to edit all of my Instagram photos these days. If you don't have Adobe Lightroom, you could try it out for free. There will be a free trial link in the video description box below, so be sure to check that out. So let's hop into Lightroom and show you my SSSSSS. My super simple sky. Let's just hop into Lightroom. I'll show you how I edit my skies. All right, here we are in Adobe Lightroom. This is a photo I took while on a hike earlier this year. Nice blue hue we have on the horizon and of course the skies. And this is what I'm going to teach you how to do today. How to make your skies look like this. So this is the photo with the skies already developed, already touched up the way I usually touch up my skies. What I'm going to do is teach you how to go from this. This might be a little more realistic, so to speak, but I think it's still a little bland. Doesn't really do the photo justice. The orange skies nicely contrast the blue horizon right here. And then also we have the orange rocks down here. I just love when we have a little bit more of an orange sky complementing the blue colors we have in the middle ground of the photo. So this is what we're going to start with. Now I'm not going to teach you how to develop the photo up to this point. Obviously I applied a lot of develop settings over here to make the photo look this way, but I already have a tutorial on my channel for how to develop your photos within Lightroom. It's called how to edit photos in Lightroom like a pro. You could check out that video. That's going to teach you everything you need to know to get your photo looking like this up to this point. But what I am going to teach you is how to develop the sky. So that's what we're going to start with right now. So the very first thing I'll do to touch up my sky is when we have an even horizon line right here. Very straight straight horizon line. What I'll do is I'll go over here, I'll select this bad boy right here. This is the graduated filter. It's essentially a mask that you apply to a certain part of your photo. And as you'll see, if we click and drag down, it'll bring up three lines. This goes from fully applying the mask down to not applying it at all. That's what these three lines mean. The graduated filter starts to fade out over the course of these three lines. Now, if we select this checkbox down here, show selected mask overlay, this will show you how the mask is affecting the photo. It's an overlay and where it shows red, that's the part of the photo that's being affected by whatever settings you're to apply over here. Typically, I'll apply two different graduated filters to my skies. The second one we'll talk about in a few minutes, but the first one, I'll actually have it naturally graduated. Now, the reason why I don't just line these three lines close to each other like that is that's a very harsh line. You can quickly see that that looks very unnatural. And so I have found by spreading these three lines out a little bit on the horizon, it allows for a much more natural mask. And you can't really tell it's a mask or a graduated filter to begin with. If you could tell there's a filter or a mask applied to a photo or a video, chances are you're probably not doing it right. So I always like to err on the side of caution and try to make everything that I'm doing to manipulate the photo look as natural as possible. This middle line could actually even help you rotate your graduated filter so it could be more in line with what the horizon is. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to keep that. Maybe drag it down just a little bit. That's good. Next thing you want to do is unselect the show selected mask overlay or just toggle O on your keyboard. That way we don't have the red overlay that shows where the mask is being applied because we obviously want to see the settings we're applying over here and what the photo is actually going to look like. So the very first thing I do to my skies, we already touched up the highlights in the photo itself. If we scroll down here, those are already at negative 100. I think this is an HDR photo. So I do have a lot more detail in the clouds here, as you can see, that we just couldn't bring out even by crushing the highlights down to negative 100. So I'll usually go over here and on our graduated filter settings, drag the highlights even more to the left. And as you can see, 
We're just bringing out that much more detail in the clouds and in the highlights of the photo. It's not a whole lot, but it's enough to give a little bit more contrast in the skies, bring out the cloud patterns, make it look real good. I usually won't touch the shadows a little bit. In my opinion, if you drag these to the left or drag them to the right, that's when it starts to look more hazy, something we're gonna talk about in a minute to fix, but I usually just leave the shadows right where they are. The highlights, I'll bring those down as far as I need to, to bring out as much detail as I can. Now that I've dropped the highlights a little bit in the graduated filter, bring out some detail in that sky. The next thing I'll do is actually drop the exposure a little bit. And you can see by slowly dragging this slider to the left, we bring out more color and again, more detail. Now you don't wanna go crazy dragging this all the way to the left because now it just looks like the sky fell out. We have just a massive black hole in our sky now. And this is a very sensitive slider, so be careful with your adjustments here. Another thing you could do, some people appreciate that minimalistic sky look. If you wanted that, you could just completely blow out your highlights and then even drag the exposure to the right so that you have this minimalistic, foggy, hazy sky that might be the look you're going for. I've seen this look on Instagram a lot lately, this minimalistic, blown out sky, and it looks cool on some photographs. For me, it's not really my style. I always like to bring out the color and detail in my skies, so I'm not gonna do that, but just know that that's an option. If that's the look you're going for, that's how you achieve that. I'm gonna drop the exposure just a little bit, probably right around there. The next thing I'll do is bump the clarity. Now, what the clarity does it really increases the contrast within the edges and the detail and texture within the photo. In this case, it's really bumping the contrast between the sky and the clouds. If we drag this from the left to the right, you can see the colors get a little bit richer and the detail and the patterns in the actual clouds definitely stand out a little bit more. Now you could go for a dramatic, very stormy looking sky by dragging this clarity all the way to the right. Or you could go for a more peaceful, silky, smooth sky by dragging this clarity to the left. So it all depends on what you want to achieve. I like that texture in my skies. I like a little bit of a dramatic sky. So I usually bump the clarity up to around 30, give or take, depends on the photo. Next up is the dehaze slider. This is increasingly becoming one of my favorite sliders within Lightroom. It is extremely sensitive. So you have to be careful with how far you drag this. You drag it too far to the right. Oh, I mean, that just looks like someone dropped six paint buckets on top of the photo and that does not look good. I mean, maybe that's a futuristic fantasy look you're going for, but for me, I'm not gonna do that. If you drag it too far to the left, it kinda has that minimalistic look from before, but kinda looks like something bad went up here when taking the photo. So point is, you just wanna be careful with the dehaze slider. I personally will slide this somewhat to the right. And by doing that, I find that the dehaze slider makes the sky look, hence the name, a little bit less hazy, but also brings out the richness in the colors. And again, a little bit more of that sky detail. The further you drag this to the right, the more dramatic the sky ends up looking. And then it gets to be a point where it's just completely unrealistic. So I like to drag this anywhere between five and 15 usually, sometimes that's even too much. Right about there, around 11, is probably where I'll keep it just for now. Just make sure you don't overdo any of these settings we're talking about, because then you go from something that looks like a natural yet impressive sky that pops to something that was very clearly touched up and might not be what you want to go for. The next thing to consider is color. Now there's a couple different ways to introduce color into your sky if it's not already present there. Since I want to contrast this blue horizon with a little bit more orange, the first thing I'll try doing is actually adjusting the color temperature within this graduated filter. I'll usually start dragging this to the right or the left, depending on if I want more blue, cooler skies or more orange, warmer skies. This is a sunset photo. I'm gonna go the orange route and I will usually drag this as far to the right until that's clearly way too orange, way too hot. And again, I try to maintain a level of realness in my photos. I'm always dangling on the edge of surreal and real. More so on the real side, so I'll usually tick this up just a couple notches. Again, this temperature slider could be pretty sensitive at times. And that looks good. Just to give you an idea of where we started, that's without any graduated filters. And this is with. Clearly we're making a difference already. You could also experiment with the tint to see if you wanna bring out more green or more purple in your sky. That actually looks pretty cool. That might be a little bit too much, but I usually will in my skies, depending on the time of year. Fall, winter, I like to introduce a little bit more purple into my skies. But you could slide the tint any way you want to introduce a little bit more color for either magenta or green into your skies. If neither of these two sliders achieve the color you're looking for in your skies, another thing you could do is go down here to color. If you slide over to this box, this box will actually apply a color graduated filter 
to your sky in the area we're affecting. So say I wanted like a very rich purple sky for whatever reason. You could go down here and with this eyedropper tool, you just select purple and then there you go. You get a very purple sky. You can select any color you want. Say you wanted yellow, it'll apply that. And once you select the color you want, say you even wanted a rich deep blue. Say that was a little bit too much, a little too blue for your taste. You could always slide this saturation slider. Say that 10 times fast, saturation slider. Sl saturation slider, wow. And by dragging that to the left, you could actually use less or more of that color in the graduated filter. I sometimes will use that. Usually, again, I try to keep it as natural as possible. So I keep my color setting for the graduated filter at zero. If it says zero down here, it's just gonna be white no matter what color you select. And I'll adjust it through the temperature sliders. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. That's pretty much what I would go for in a typical Instagram photo when it comes to my skies. Usually what I'll do to finish this bad boy up is I'll get another graduated filter over here and drag down from the top. This time, I'll make it even more graduated than before so that we go from affecting the skies at the very top of the sky to not affecting at all by the time we're at the bottom of the sky. That way we have mostly the top part of the photo being affected by this next effect. This is carrying over the settings from the last mask I did, so I'm just gonna hold down option on my keyboard and reset that. And what I'm gonna do for the second graduated filter, I'm just gonna tick down the exposure one more time so that it brings a little bit more attention to the horizon right here. We have that nice little fade in from a dark sky to a lighter sky and it just makes it a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more what I usually go for in my skies. Nothing crazy, just a little touch. And then I'll click enter and both of those masks are applied. This is the look I go for in my skies. You might go for a different color or you might wanna make them look a little less dramatic. Totally up to you, but this is how I use the tools. This is how you could use the tools to achieve a look of your own in your skies. I'll show you before. Again, not bad. But for me, I really want to make those oranges and blues and cloud details pop in the sky. If I show you the after, that does the job for me. One other thing I want to show you is this example right here. This is another photograph where I touch up the skies within the photo. And then obviously we have this castle right here, which is taking out that straight horizon shot. So you can't really use the graduated filter because if you do, you're going to be affecting the whole top part of this castle as well. And you're going to see the filter being applied up here and not down here. So in this case, the graduated filter won't work. What you're going to use is the brush. The brush works in the same way as the graduated filter. It's just an adjustment brush and you have to actually paint on the area that you want to affect on the photo. I've done that if I click this right up here and toggle on this checkbox down here or click O on the keyboard. As you can see, all the red areas of this photo right now, which are just the sky, that's being affected, but nothing over here on the castle is. How you do that, it's real simple. Untoggle this mask that we already have applied here. And this is what you'll do. You click the adjustment brush right here, you'll click new, and then you want to go down to here. You can affect the sides, which is the size of the actual circle, the inner circle of the mask. That's where it will be applied. You can change the feather, which the higher you go, that second outer circle, that that changes, the larger the feather, the more gradual the filter will be from the inner circle to the outer circle. The outer circle, not applying the mask, the inner circle, applying it fully. Flow, picture flow like a coat of paint. The higher the flow, the thicker the paint. If we toggle on our mask right here and we start to paint, if you have a flow of 100 and you do one pass over this, it's gonna be very harsh and applied very heavily on your first pass. I usually will not do that. I'll usually bring down the flow to anywhere between 35 and 50%. That way I could brush over the area and do it a few times. And that way, if I happen to accidentally go into the castle a little bit, auto masks down here might help that. It'll recognize this edge and try to decide what to apply itself to. As you can see there, it didn't really work, but that's why I use a flow of 35 to 50 so that I could go over certain area a few times and if I did happen to spill just a little bit it's not going to be as harsh of a spillover as if I had a flow of 100. Of course you could always click erase down here adjust those settings and erase the areas you accidentally went over on your mask your adjustment brush and erase those areas so that it doesn't affect the top part of the castle. But that's how you apply the brush and once you apply the brush area just like we did the graduated filter you're going to use the same settings as the graduated filter just with the adjustment brush area. And then here's just a couple more examples of photos on my Instagram that I have touched up with this graduated filter their sexy skies technique. And that is the secret to those BMAX skies on Instagram. A few gradient filters, a few specific setting adjustments, and boom! sexy skies. Your skies will pop a little bit more than they did before and help you achieve a certain look that you're going for. If you end up using the sky editing technique in your own photos, don't forget to mention me in the caption of that photo 
EpiMacDelic at Mention Me, and I'll be sure to check them out. I love seeing your guys' photos. Anytime you use one of these editing techniques, I definitely want to check it out. So tag me in your photos. I hope you found this sky editing tutorial helpful. If you did, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe for more photography and filmmaking tutorials like this one on the channel each and every Thursday. Now it's time to go upload this baby to the gram. And if, you know, you happen to see it, please don't forget to shoot a like my way. What kind of wink was that?